Pokercast is sponsored by CollectorsCash.com, who now have your new set next Destinies in stock at amazing prices. Get your boxes, sealed products and single cards like Mewtwo EX for the most competitive prices around, as well as all of your current format goodies within easy reach. If you're looking to stock up on anything Pokemon or any other card game for that matter, then head over to CollectorsCash.com after the show. Hey everybody and welcome to episode 68 of Poker Class. As you can see I haven't got any video footage of myself today as I've recently purchased a new computer and along with that and having to install new software I haven't been able to secure enough time to sit down and record myself. However I will be able to bring you an episode in this format so without further ado we're going to be looking into the future now and past this format to look at a very new deck idea which will hit our format right before Nationals. So Dark Explorers is just on the horizon, but without the official set list, which we should be getting in next week, I haven't done any coverage on it simply because it will be mainly speculation at this point. However, I'm pretty excited now for the new set and it should bring a lot of new decks to the table, so I thought I'd cover a new deck today that's been getting a slight bit of hype already, and it involves Tornadus EX. Now, for the beginning of this episode, I'm going to bring forward a list I've acquired from Japan to explain how the deck works a little bit, but since they're currently in a black and white onwards format, it will still need some tweaking to become repetitive over here, which is what I'm going to be doing right at the end of this episode. So without further ado, here is what the Japanese list looks like for our new age donk deck, Tornadus EX Donk. So let's go over the initial idea of the deck first, and the cards included since you may not be familiar with them yet, and they're all in Japanese. So first up is your main guy, Tornadus EX. He has a hefty 170 HP and 2 attacks. The first for a double colourless and the second for just another energy of any type. The first attack is what this deck is all about and is called Blow Through. For just a double colourless energy you do 30 damage, but when there's a stadium in play you do 30 more damage, totalling 60 for just a double colourless. This is perfect for knocking out most popular cards in the format, including Celebi and Tynamo, along with any Rogue Cyndaquil, Tepigs or any other basics for that matter. Now 60 damage can also be a little low though since we have beefy guys like Terrakion and Zekrom roaming around, so you aren't going to be able to donk these, but you will need to do more than 60 damage to them on the first turn to set up a KO for the second turn, and we aren't talking about using plus power. Your next Pokemon is Aerodactyl, one of the new revived Pokemon mechanic team, and you may be thinking that all revived Pokemon do suck right now, so why would we want to use it? And this is where Twist Mountain also comes in. Instead of having to play those incredibly bad fossil cards, you can put Twist Mountain into play which allows you to flip a single coin per turn, and if the result is heads, you can place a revived Pokemon from your hand onto the bench. So they're not so bad really. Sure the result will be on a flip, but compared to the revived Pokemon trainers we were given, it's a lot better at getting out your revived Pokemon. But why would you want Aerodactyl out in the first place? And the answer is because of its ability called Primal Scream. This nifty ability states that if Aerodactyl is in play, all attacks on your opponent's active receive a boost of 10 damage, and that is for each Aerodactyl in play too. So that raises your attack power slightly by just 10 damage, but that does put other Pokemon like Smeagol in range for a turn 1 KO and tips over the halfway point on 130 HP Pokemon too, with the damage only getting higher for each heads you flip on Twist Mounting. And the other Pokemon in the deck are pretty self-explanatory. Regular Tornadus is there if you can't get that turn 160 or 70 with its EX, but you can get the turn 280 with Hurricane, and Mewtwo EX is there for opposing Mewtwo since you won't need plus powers to get your KOs on opponents because of Aerodactyl. There is possibly only one Mewtwo in here since your late game really isn't that strong anyway, and I feel one Mewtwo could be the play by the time it comes to Nationals, simply because the new Dark deck resists it quite well, but that is for another episode. And this part of the deck is where it gets a little strange because of the restriction the Japanese have of only being in a black and white on format, since they lose great shuffle draws that we have like Professor Oak's new theory. So from here I'm going to change up the list a little bit to our format and it should look something like this. Now personally I haven't done much testing with the deck so this list is going to be a little rough, but as the set draws nearer we should see more refined builds hitting the table so we'll see how this one does. 
Now the list is going to be aimed towards the early game and getting that turn 1 damage, so I've put in Professor Juniper at a max of 4, just to give you access to as many cards as possible on that first turn, since it is our most aggressive form of draw supporter at the moment. Four Pond is also there for a decent set of draw on the first turn, if you can't hit your ideal Juniper, which will happen, and I've also put four Bianca in here, which I'll explain before you start shouting at the screen. Bianca has actually become a more viable supporter, and why? Because of the next card on the list, Ultra Ball, also a new card which isn't quite confirmed for Dark Explorers, but is predicted to be in the set. What Ultra Ball does is allow you to search your deck for any Pokemon in exchange for discarding two cards from your hand. Now since Aerodactyl is a revived Pokemon, it doesn't count as a basic Pokemon, so Jewel Ball or Collector won't be effective in this deck. Since that is going to be awkward to search out and you can't really rely on drawing him on every first turn, Ultra Ball is the perfect way to search it out. Bianca allows you to fill your hand back up to 6 and is going to bode well with you having discard cards out of your hand in the very first turn to search out your Pokemon needed for the Donk, a combo I think we will start to see more of since there isn't much else in terms of straight draw for speedy decks outside of Juniper and Pont. Next on your list are 4 Junkarm and 3 Catcher for when you don't get that turn 1 and want to pick off those weak Tynamo all game, and that is followed up by a single switch and single plus power. Since you're only allowed to play a single stadium per turn, you have to choose between the free retreat of Skyro Bridge or the possible extra damage from Twist Mountain Flips. Switch could come in handy when you start with something you don't want to, like regular Tornadus or Mewtwo, and can still get that turn 1 without having to play Sky Arrow. The single plus power is there to tip over those KOs if you don't get the right Twist Mountain Flips, or need extra damage on top of that to get those KOs. 3 Poker Gear is also in here just as a consistency booster. If you have Pont in your hand for example, but you'd much rather net a Juniper for a decent 7 cards, you can play this card to go fishing for it, and it also helps out for those dead starting hands you otherwise wouldn't be able to get out of. And last in the list are your two stadium cards, Sky Arrow Bridge and Twist Mountain, both for different starting situations, but both there for an extra damage output on Tornadus EX. Sky Arrow, as mentioned earlier, will give your unwanted starters free retreat so you can hit with blow through, and Twist Mountain is there when you have Tornadus ready to go in the active spot and want to up its damage output with your flips. Both the only real stadiums that we have at the moment that will help you out with that turn 1 attack. And that is pretty much your list, apart from your energy, which sits at 14, with 4 double colourless and 10 psychic. The type of energy really doesn't matter since every one of your attackers, including Aerodactyl, hits for purely colourless energy, but psychic gives you that option of hitting with Psycho Drive with Mewtwo if all else fails. So with your list built, what would your ideal opening hand for this deck be? Well a Tornadus EX active with a double colourless and stadium in hand is all you really need, as Aerodactyl isn't always necessary for getting first turn wins. Comparing that to decks like ZPST and CMT, who both need a lot more in their starting hand to get ideal starts, and you have a very reliable turn 160 or 70 to start dishing out. However, this deck is going to struggle if you hit anything past the mid game, since 60 damage isn't going to help you for too long. Do bear in mind that Tornadus EX's second attack though, Power Blast, which does 100 base damage for 3 colourless, possibly turn 2, which can help you in the later stages of the game. Pair this Power Blast damage with the 60 you do on turn 1 and you'll be taking down almost everything in your path, even those pesky lightning decks taking over the format. Even though your main attacker is lightning weak and gives up 2 prizes in getting KO'd, this deck should have some potential in that matchup since Tynamos are an easy KO on turn 1, not even needing a stadium when it comes to those 3 retreaters, and those eels are getting 1 hit KO'd with Power Blast. So looking back at that, you actually have yourself a more manageable matchup than you once had. Don't get me wrong though, it will be a matter of who goes first, since you do need to get those KOs quicker as you give up 2 prizes apiece for each Bolt Strike, and plus Power Disaster Vault, and the matchup is still not going to be in your favour. But do bear in mind that Aerodactyl is fighting type 2 and can hit for 3 energy fairly well, if you factor in a couple of Primal Screams. This Circle Meals matchup will be the one that really controls how far this deck can go when it comes to this new format. And that is pretty much it for your first Dark Explorers deck analysis, and I hope you're as excited as I am for the new set on May the 9th. If you did enjoy this video then please take a second to leave a like in the bottom left hand corner, especially if you prefer this format to my usual episodes, and please subscribe in the top right hand corner in a second. Thanks a lot for watching, stay tuned to my channel for all new videos during the week, and I'll see you all for a new poker class next week.